Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. I, or Jesus, has a gift for you. It is a gift of salvation. Will you accept this gift? The salvation, all of it, is the work of God himself. This is why I always say, go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. Accept the Lord into your heart. We're running out of time. Um, we are seeing a lot of things that the Bible has told us will come to pass, literally coming to pass right in front of our faces at this last moment. And this gift is available to everyone. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what kind of past you have. If you think that you're more powerful than the salvation of the Lord, that there in lies the problem. Some good news. This is good news. The gospel of the Lord is good news. Um, you don't have to be a Bible scholar. There's no work to do because it's already been done. Jesus did it at the cross. You just need to trust in the Lord, John 6, and accept the Lord, his free gift. It's a free gift, and it's available to everyone. And I mean everyone. doesn't matter what you've done. The proof is in when you've accepted the free gift, there will become a change in your life. You will begin to change. Jesus Christ is Almighty God. I had some Jehovah's Witness come to my door. Um... For me, it's easy to deal with them because they insist that Jesus Christ is a great prophet. Jesus Christ is almighty God, the creator of all things. Jesus Christ in the Bible tells us that nothing was created but by him. There's so many people that kind of believe that perhaps, yes, he's the son of God. He is. There is a trinity, a holy trinity, and all three are one. And each one has a different purpose, I suppose. Not purpose, but job? I don't know. I don't know how to, we can't, our finite minds cannot define it perfectly. But Jesus Christ is Almighty God, and he is offering a free gift to you of salvation. All right, let's get into the photos like we do. Let's see here. Um, I don't even know where to start. Right here. For the Lord, uh, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead will rise first. I believe that there are two raptures and an end gathering of those that will go into the millennium. I don't believe I. I for the last 2,000 years, we've been living in the age of grace, and there is a bride that will be removed from the earth and taken in a rapture in the age of grace. There is an age of tribulation. We've all read it. It's in the Bible of a group of people, and it is a massive group, a group that no man can count. It's huge, billions, and there is going to be a lot of people that die right after the bride leaves. How long after the bride leaves does the wife, as it were, Rachel, taken to heaven? How long after that? I don't know. I'm still trying. I'm still working on it. I haven't figured it out yet 100%. I have an idea, and I'm going to present that today, but I don't know 100% how long after. But I do know that um, Stan over at the 1111 sign has shown there to be three earthquakes, three distinct different earthquakes. There will be an earthquake of all the bride that have died, that have been dreaming of the day that Jesus would return. In, they would rise out of their graves. The graves would be thrown open. There will be a earthquake on the day that the 
saints of the tribulation go into heaven. A great multitude, no man can count. They've washed their robes white in the blood of Christ, and they receive palm branches when they get to heaven. There will be a great earthquake before that. There will be another earthquake at the end of the tribulation. And those who are dead but believed did not receive the mark. They will be raised as well as those who are still alive, and they will go into the millennium. They'll still be human. They'll still have babies. They'll still um, have the. They, they can still sin and they can die. Those are the three groups that I see. And somebody else showed me a verse and said there possibly is a fourth. I don't know. I, have to, I haven't studied it yet. So we'll go forward. God says, don't marvel at this, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all, all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They shall have done, oh, sorry, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So there are going to be people who are resurrected that are not going to heaven. They're under damnation. It doesn't say eternal damnation. It says unto the resurrection of damnation. I don't know if that's a, a resurrection to hell or a resurrection to um, being a tribulation saint or those that go in the land. I'm not sure because it doesn't say eternal, so I'm not 100% uh, not sure how long that is. Here again in Matthew, and the graves. Now this is when Jesus rose. Um, Jesus, it says, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now, I have heard, I heard somebody teach the other day that they would have died again. And they would have gone to the graves. But the work was done. I have a feeling that when Jesus, see, when Jesus rose that day, he rose very early. As a matter of fact, he didn't complete that night, which is why a lot of people get confused on how long three days and three nights were. He did not complete the fourth night um, when they counted because he rose before the sun rose on Sunday morning, the dawning of the new Sabbath. And when he rose, bodies of the saints rose with him. Remember, he went to Hades. He went to lead captivity captive. He went down there to bring out those that he was going to resurrect from the time of creation. And I would imagine that Adam and Eve were in that group. All the way up to the point of when grace began, that period of time. Uh, you're looking at 4,000 years. And all those people rose. Um, there in Israel, they would have seen some of them, but it happened all around the planet, I'm sure. And I believe, and now he rose, and when he rose, he walked around. You can see a record of him walking around, but that evening, he disappears. You don't hear anything about Jesus again until he meets Thomas in the upper room. He rose to heaven. When he returned from heaven from those seven days, he went to see Thomas in the upper room. I believe when he rose, he took those people that came out of the graves with him. The dead in Christ rise first. They rose with him. There's no more record of what happened to them after they rose. There's a lot of conjecture thinking, well, they must have lived and then died. I don't think so. I think they went to heaven with Jesus. There's no, it's not articulated very, it's not articulated at all in the Bible. Why Jesus why they were hiding in the upper room on the eighth day where Thomas was there. Why were they up there hiding? If Jesus was walking with them, they wouldn't have been up there hiding. The 40-day count begins after Thomas. Jesus, You don't hear any record of them being in that upper room hiding from the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees because they were walking with Jesus. And they walked with him for 40 days. And in the sight of everyone, Jesus rises. This first one... The, the, the morning he rose from the grave, he walked around. There's a record of him being there until the evening. There's something going on with this seven days and 40 days. Something, there's, there's some message in here, and, it, and it's, it's bizarre because, like I said, when I 
calculate the first calendar and the fifth calendar, there's 47 days in between them. When you count Jesus um, rising and then meeting Thomas in the upper room and walking for 40 days, there's 47 days again. When you see the account of the flood, you see that God told Noah, get into the ark, and in seven days, I'm going to begin the flood. But the lightning and the thunder, if you read the book of Jasher, began before that. See the Jasher Jubilee, but it began that, on the, for example, on timeline number one that I show you, that happened on October the 24th. Lightning striking, thundering, everything. They didn't see this before, but they still wouldn't repent. They still wouldn't believe. Even though all this was going on, just like we see out in the world now, all this is going on, there are so many people that still won't listen. They think the world's going to continue on as it does. They ask the question, where's, his, where's your Lord at? I don't see him. He's not coming back. Things are always going to be the same as they always have been. Don't fall into that snare. It is not. We can see it. We can discern the times. We can actually see it's happening. So I found also that Noah's Ark, God told Noah 120 years in advance that he was going to flood the earth. Noah had 120 years to warn the people that this event was coming. He did not build the ark for 120 years. He built the ark for five years. And I'm going to show you a, a cool little thing I just found a little while ago about that here in a minute. But he spent five years building the ark. He spent, 100, he spent 120 years warning everybody. And in the last five years of that 120-year warning, he built an ark with his family. I would imagine he had paid people to help him, too. I mean, it's, it's, it was a, quite an undertaking. And then God told him, go up there, sit by the door, and I'm going to send the animals in there two by two. Just sit by the door. I'll send the animals in there two by two and seven by seven for the clean animals. And that whole event took place, and then God shut the door. Can't quite figure out if that happened on the 24th or if it happened just prior to the flood beginning on the 31st. So let's get back into this. All right. So we have the, another example here. The graves were open. Many bodies. Oh, I, I read this. The Holy Spirit appeared, appeared to many. Okay. So another, just a, just a couple of this, this 47, the something about 47. Did you know in order for God to shift the head of the year from September the 15th to March the 15th. We find this in Exodus 12, where God told uh, Moses, this now will be the head of your year. He shifted it six months. In order for him to do that, currently our planet is offset from center, from the equator facing the sun, it's offset by 23.5 degrees. In order for God to have offset the planet by six months, he would have had to have moved 23.5 degrees from, from, from the, the sun over the equator to 23.5 degrees to the sun under the equator. That is 47 degrees. The, the planet took a 47 degree shift in order for God to be able to, I mean, he can do whatever he wants, but for that six months, the planet had to shift 47 degrees in order for September to become March. And we know that because we read it in the Bible. I wanted to show you something. Everybody's saying that this is Passover 526. This, this was not Passover. I believe personally that, and, and, and I don't want to discourage anyone from looking at the moon and the sun and the stars and all that, but... And I don't want to discourage flat earthers because I really don't know. We might get up there and find a flat earth. But for lack of a flat earth, we're going to use a round earth. The equator, 23.5 23 degrees. In order to change the season suddenly, boom, 23.5 degrees facing that way. The sun is always here. It shifted, 23, 47 degrees in total, 23.5 off center from the, from the equator, 23.5 degrees. That's where... And as it goes around the sun, on this side of the sun, you can see that it's below, and on this side of the sun, it's above, like that. So, the moon can go around our planet faster or slower than it currently does. 
it would not change how long our day is. The only thing that will change how long our day is, is if this speeds up. Currently, it takes 24 hours for the Earth to turn from pick a point, go around, boom, pick the same point, 24 hours. If the Earth began to spin faster, our days would get shorter. However, on the other side of the sun, we will see a constellation. That will not, I don't care how fast this planet turns, this, you will never see another constellation because the Earth is still going around the sun. There's three events that are taking place. And I'm trying to work it out to where I understand, but the Earth moves around the sun. The moon moves around the Earth, causing our tides and the Earth spins. You have three things. Is that hour, minute, and second? I don't know. Still working on that part. So I wanted to show you that part real quick. So, in my opinion, the feast days can't move. And if you look, Passover, 526, 2021, they said Passover was on March 27th. They're literally, they're literally uh, two months away. Are they that far off from the correct stuff? Is this blood moon telling us that's the Passover? Or is this blood moon, is this blood moon been warning us of things to come? Do we assign Passover tabernacles, Passover tabernacles to these blood moons? Do we state those are it? Or do we look at the blood moon and say something, something's going to happen? So I've looked at all of them, the Passover, for the, the last previous two years, and they don't match. GG over at, is it Blue Heaven? Blue Blue Heaven, I think she is. Uh, she, came, she, uh, she had a video on this, and she said that it was 1010 on the clock i'm looking at it and it's two minutes to uh, 10 minutes till two but on the other side from god's perspective it would be 10 10 just like she said there is a period of time in between these two times of what would that i don't even know how long i should have done the math on that 10 10 to uh 10 minutes till two um i don't even know if that's three hours and 40 minutes or if that's four hours and 40 minutes but that i, th I found that interesting I didn't even know there was a clock up there. <laughs> so, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? This is where I get the beginning of the year. We are in the passage that's talking about Lazarus had, in fact, died. On, in this conversation, down here on 14, it's not highlighted, but down here on 14, Jesus said, uh, sorry, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus died on a day where there are 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. And I've showed you that's how I start the timeline from that. I find it, this is what I'm talking about. A solar eclipse is coming on the 25th. I haven't done the math on where the solar eclipse is and what time it begins but the 25th in israel is the 24th here um they are ahead of us is that right are they ahead of us yeah they're ahead of us so by uh, i think it's seven hours so they might see a solar eclipse while we're still on the 24th and the 24th according to my timeline as i put it out here again everything just seems to fall right into place that's when methuselah dies then on November the 8th, there is a blood moon. I have nothing on my timeline for November the 8th. However, that does fall three days before November the 11th, which November the 10th, 11th is the day that Noah, after one year and 10 days, leaves the ark. This is why, this is what I wanted to talk to you about. I am not 100% sure, and I thought it for quite some time, that when we go, we're Leah. We're not, we're not the, the, the one that, that Jacob worked for. Jacob loves Rachel, but he got Leah. Leah was his bride. So he's upset at Laban, and Laban says, hey, we can't give you the younger before the older. You have to take Leah. But if you'll work for me for another seven years and give Leah her seven days, then 
you can have Rachel. And Jacob's word is as good as his bond. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. He loved Rachel. He worked for seven years and didn't even feel it. We have those blood moon tetrads that happened seven years ago. I think that um, this is the passage speaking to that seven years that have already passed. They've already passed. They've already gone by. And then this is where he wakes up in the morning. He finds out that he has Leah. And he says, Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, It must not be so, uh, so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week. That's one week. Everybody calls that seven years. It is not seven years, and I'll show you why. Fulfill her week, and I will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet another seven years. Okay, I think seven years has passed, and I think we're looking at the seven-year tribulation right here. And we go forward. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, one week, seven days, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. Now, we see here that Rachel was barren. How would they know that Rachel was barren if he wasn't married to her? Surely they didn't just, uh, you know, shack up. They were actually married. He actually married her. This is the wife. Rachel's the wife. Leah is the bride. And so, in fact, that proves, in fact, that seven days, um, seven days he got Rachel later, but he continued on the work for seven years. Now, this period of time, the tribulation time, the seven-year period of time, there is work. There are so many, I know people are saying the tribulation is five months, three and a half years. It is not. It is seven years long. There are so many examples in the Bible of this period of time that lasts seven years. I haven't seen any decent arguments showing that it's not seven years long. But this argument, I do see that it is possible that after seven days, I would imagine that a lot of people are going to drop to their knees. A lot of churchgoers are going to say, that crazy Christian that was running around saying the world's going to end, and, and, you know, the rapture's going to happen, it did. And I didn't believe it. I did not believe it for a second. But it did happen. And here we are. And they're going to drop to their knees. And they're going to try to figure out the date next. And they're going to be watchful and wondering. I just wonder, based on this passage, that because Jacob got Rachel after seven years, but had to do the work for seven days, I'm sorry, that, that, that uh, Jacob got Rachel after seven days, fulfilled her week. After so, he gets, he still works seven more years for her. He owes Laban seven years, but he gets her after seven days. So that passage kind of has me thinking that perhaps there is another rapture a lot sooner than at the end of the seven years. That the work will be done for seven years and at the end of the seven years is when, um, and remember, I mean, um, we say this now, we're not going to get beat up and go to heaven, jump on horses, get crowns, and a, a rod of iron and a, and a white cloak and come riding directly back with Jesus, eat a meal, see our mansion, and do all these things. And I would say the same thing for the saints of the tribulation. They have to go up there. They receive palm branches. They, they wash their robes white in the blood of Jesus. Um, they're, they're standing there long enough for somebody to ask, who are these people here? Oh, you don't know? They came out of the great tribulation. Oh, and who's answering the question? The bride is answering that question. Rachel was barren. Now, this is the seven days. It says, for yet seven days, I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And every living substance that I made will I destroy. So, again, we have that seven days and that 40 days. And that's there's something in that. The 47 degrees, the earth shifted, the, 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 the seven days for the flood, there's something in there. Said, and now, I wanted, to, I wanted to point this out to you. 
All the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. Methuselah lived 187 years and begat Lamech. We know that Lamech lived 777 years. All the days of Lamech were 777 years. 777 years, and Methuselah, where's it at? I lost it. Methuselah was 187 years old when he begat Lamech. So when did Lamech die? If Methuselah lived to be 969, Lamech lived to be 777, but Methuselah was 187 when Lamech was born. When did Lamech die? He died when Methuselah was 964 years old. 964 years old is five years. 969, Methuselah died the week before the flood began. They buried him one week before the flood began um, and five years before that is when Lamech died, his son. He died when Methuselah was 964. I found that kind of cool that I've read in um, the book of Jasher that, or, 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 or uh, Jubilees, I'm not sure which, that Methuselah died just before the flood and that God told Noah to build an ark and in 120 years I will flood the earth and Noah preached, he was a preacher, Noah preached that for 115 years and then he began to build an ark, it took him five years. When he began to build that ark is when Lamech died, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, let's see here, at that time at what time? At the time the flood was to begin, one week before. You find this in the book of Jasher. At that time, after the death of Methuselah, the Lord said to Noah, go with thy household into the ark. Remember, God told him in our Bible, it says, get into the ark, for in yet one week I will flood the earth. Uh, this is the uh, day of equal parts. I showed you that. That's a free gift. Okay. I want to get into this real quick right here. Methuselah dies up at the top in blue. Heshbon 10, October the 24th on timeline number one. There are 47 days in between these calendars, one and five. That it happens this year, does not happen next year. It's almost like, I don't even want to say portal because that's, that's I don't want to be like that. Like God could take us at any time. He doesn't need like anything lining up per se, but I think it's a it's a thing to find. Those 47 days are important for some reason. So if you'll notice over here, the Feast of Trumpets on timeline number one has gone and passed, September the 15th. But look what, look what the date is down on timeline number five where the moon, the first sliver of the moon, uh, appears after the sun reaches Aries. A lot of people are using that timeline down there, timeline number five, and that is October the 31st. I found that pretty cool because 47 days after September the 15th, over to the right, is Heshvan 17, the day the earth is flooded on Halloween day. Halloween is not a celebration of evil. Halloween is a celebration of God destroying evil from the earth. Um, I don't think people understand what Halloween means. Or Satan took it hostage like he does everything else and called it uh, his day. I believe it's, uh, is, is November the 1st, Del Dia de, no, de los Muertos? I'm not sure. Anybody speak Spanish, put in the comment section, please. I, I believe November the 1st is Dia de, lo, de los Muertos. Um, and then you look over, one year and 10 days later, Noah leaves the ark, and that happens on November 10th, November 11th. A lot of people are seeing November 11th. So here's what I'm looking at, and take it with a grain of salt. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just like everybody else trying to figure this out. But I want you to notice those 47 days up here from the time Methuselah dies, and the rain goes on and the flood ends all the way down on December the 11th. I want you, and, and then I want you to notice from the Feast of Trumpets, 
40 days and then seven days after Methuselah dies, the flood begins. You see that how there's 40 and then there's seven and then there's 40. There's something in here, like a double 47 for some reason. And I, 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 me personally, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a, a, a possible, and, and again, this is these are just high wash days. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we're all trying to figure this out, right? We're just, we're along for the ride. And the wonderful thing about being along for this ride is the journey. It's not the, so, I mean, it's the destination. Trust me, I want to get to heaven. But it's the journey, how much we learn on our way about Bible verses that we've never seen before that somebody articulates. And you're like, wow, that blew my mind. So, um, does the Feast of Trumpets start on Halloween Day on timeline number five? This is the date, the removing of the, the, the covering of the Ark. That's the same exact date, Septishri 1, if we use timeline number five. If we use timeline number one, Methuselah dies on October the 24th. There is a solar eclipse on, is it the 24th or 25th? thought that was pretty interesting. And then on November the 8th, there is a blood moon, which is three days away from what everyone is seeing as 11-11. I'm even seeing it. I took pictures of it. I'm even seeing 11-11. Does the rapture occur on October the 24th? Does seven days later, God gives his bride those seven days? And seven days later, on October the 31st, um, the first seal is opened. Is that is that a thing, maybe? I, I don't know. And then um, they ride, and on November the 11th, um, tribulation, or maybe tribulation begins on October the 31st, and the first seal is opened on November the 11th. That's just my guess. I'm not sure, um, but it would be, it would match. And that's kind of what I look for when I build the timeline is, does it all match? You know, it really matches that, you know, we have, and uh, again, I don't want to call it a portal or th anything like that, because that's, that, that's out of my uh, wheelhouse anyway. I don't understand that kind of stuff. But there's something that happened when Jesus rose and he spent those seven days in heaven and then he came back. I didn't even do the math between the time he rose and the time of uh, Methuselah dying. That might be interesting. I'll have to do that. Um, how many days that is. That, I, I really want to do that now. <laughs> so, um, but there's, there's uh, for me, when I see the, the, a timeline like this, I can match events in them. So Jesus rises. Seven days later, he meets Thomas in the upper room on the self same day. And then he walks with man for 40 days, and he ascends. He ascends to heaven on Sivan 3. Um, something going on here where we have 40 days uh, from Feast of Trumpets, and then we land on October the 24th, the day that Methuselah dies. This is also the solar eclipse. And then seven days later, the flood begins on October the 31st, uh, Halloween. Also the day, oh no, eight days later, being the blood moon on the 8th, maybe a three-day warning because tribulation has begun on October the 31st and the first seal is opened on November the 11th. That's just a theory. Don't know if it's true or not, but it does match. And again, it's about the journey. We're just trying to learn all we can. We're more and more intimate with the Bible every single day. We dive into it and we study and, and we try to figure this out. And I think that's you know, the, I think that's the, the, it's the glory of God to hide a matter, you know. I mean, he does. He hides the matter. He does this on purpose, and he wants us seeking and trying to figure it out. It shows your true heart. It shows what you want, ultimately. It's like he's sitting in heaven, and he's like the attorney, and they're looking at you, and you're just sitting back doing nothing and not even caring. I mean, there's your evidence right there. Or you spend day in and day out studying and trying to find coincidences with numbers, you know, things that correlate together, and you try to figure this thing out. Not everybody. And again, I want to I want to say that everyone has a gift. It is not the same gift. We all have different gifts. I was really shocked that I started seeing 1111 like that. Trust me, I've never I don't see that kind of stuff. I don't see tag numbers. 
I don't dream. Of course, I've had a couple of dreams. It's pretty cool. But um, this is what I see. I see a relationship in numbers and uh, dates and times and, and, you know, coordinate that with what is in the Bible. And that's what I do. So everybody has a wonderful gift. You know, keep keep going forward. Don't discount the gift that God has given you because he's given all of us a wonderful gift. So Repo Man 64, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I believe we're going to be out of here very soon. I personally can't, and, and better men than me have studied this uh, Jubilee and uh, the uh, Shemitah cycle, and they say we're in that year. They're saying 2022 is it, and so here we are. We're in 2022. We're in 5783 on the Hebrew calendar, although I don't think so. I think it just became 5993 because of the lost 210 years of the um, Hebrew timeline. So 5993 leaving us with seven years uh, because of those 210 lost years. So uh, I could keep going. Numbers just exploding everywhere. Anyway. Repo Man 64, we're running out of time. There's a free gift for you. Free gift. Jesus is offering you a free gift. doesn't matter what you've done. Just accept that gift. And watch the change begin, because it will. It will. Guaranteed. Repo Man 64, we'll chat with you later.